Ladies and gentlemen, could I kindly bring you all to a start, please? Thank you. So, I'd like to start off by simply wishing you all good afternoon. Or, as they say here in Latvian, labdien. Please correct my pronunciation if it's incorrect, of course. Now, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here to Riga for this European Consumer Protection Conference. A warm welcome despite today's rather windy weather, I believe. Now, this conference, as you are all probably familiar, has a specific title, which is, quite simply, Future Priorities of Consumer Policy in the Digital Era. This underlines what we believe to be a two-fold aim for today and tomorrow's conference. Firstly, to share ideas and exchange views on how to enhance consumer protection policy in today's digital era, logically. But secondly, and very importantly, also with a view of achieving a very important second and equal aim. And that's producing some valuable and concrete outputs from today and tomorrow's sessions for the upcoming European Consumer Summit. Now, our conference program has six main phases to help us achieve this dual aim together. This afternoon we have two of those phases. You can note them on the slide here. Our three keynote speakers will kick us off today. We have Minister Rezniece Uazola, Latvia's Minister of, for of Economic Affairs. We have Commissioner Jourova, the European Commissioner for Justice, Consumers and Gender Equality. And Professor Vaidere, a member of the European Parliament. Then, following our coffee break, we have this afternoon's panel discussion, Consumer Challenges in a Dynamic Environment. Now, both of these phases will offer all of you an important opportunity, I hope, which is the opportunity to pose your questions to our keynote speakers and your questions to our panels as well. And I'd already like to note to you that you should have found two very important tools on your chair, a pad of paper and a pen. And I'd invite you warmly to use those while you're following our speakers throughout today and tomorrow to note down your questions. And I will take those questions from you, of course, and pose them to the panels after. Now, after we've finished our proceedings with the keynote speakers and first panel discussion today, we'll then move on to what I'm sure you're all looking forward to after a busy days of conference, dinner. Now, our dinner is in a particular location this evening, just a few minutes across the road from the hotel. It's actually Latvia's National Railway History Museum. It'll give you an opportunity to obviously dialogue with each other, and also importantly, try out some local <coughs> Latvian cuisine and music as well. Now, tomorrow kicks off relatively early in the morning with a panel discussion on priority setting in consumer policy. Then, following a coffee break, taking us through to the mid-morning and lunch, we have three parallel breakout sessions for you. The first deals with challenges for enforcing product safety in the digital era. The second, dealing with problematic consumer markets and the way forward, making more effective enforcement and redress. And finally, the third, consumer confidence and empowerment. Now, as with today's activities, these two phases will give you, again, further opportunities for you to pose you and your organization's views to our panels and speakers. We'll then all return back to the main room where the chairs of these three parallel breakout sessions will then produce summaries for you of the key points from each session. So you're also able to catch the main outputs of the sessions that you weren't able to attend. Then, finally, we'll have some closing summary and remarks and a light lunch to send you off well for your journeys home if you're traveling back to your home countries. So, to conclude my brief opening remarks, I'd like to uh, reiterate two things. I think the success of this conference will be on the one side, of course, in the hands of our speakers, but equally on the other side will be in the hands of all of you, the audience, and it'll be the interaction between you and our speakers and the questions and discussions that follow that will create the value from these two days. So, without further ado, I'd like to concede the floor to the Minister. Minister, the floor is yours. Dear Commissioner Jurova, dear Professor Vaidere, 
and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have the honor of welcoming you in uh, Riga. Welcome to this conference and uh, welcome to the Latvian Presidency of the Council of the EU. And I'm very happy to see you all here in our beautiful capital. Uh, during my speech, I will say a few words about uh, this conference and uh, then highlight the major priorities of uh, current uh, consumer policy. So first things first, the conference. Um, Rainis, the famous Latvian poet, wrote some very meaningful words. I'm not sure whether the translation would be perfectly correct, but the, the idea is that the one who is going to last is the one who is willing to change. So you have to be adaptive. I think we can confidently borrow this uh, thought. It is um, highly relevant, relevant also today when speaking of uh, modern consumer policy that has to stand up to new challenges and to adapt to market changes. As we are, are all aware, the European consumer agenda was adopted uh, back in 2012. Since then, numerous activities have been successfully carried out uh, to maximize consumer participation and uh, trust uh, in the EU single market. Uh, later today, we will hear about these achievements in greater detail from our colleagues in the European Commission. After all of this important work, we've, we face a series of uh, central, also crucial questions, and those are what are the next steps? How can we help our consumers be better protected, more confident and uh, also smarter themselves? How can we ensure that the single market works for the benefit of uh, consumers and protect them and at the same time gives the simple and safe access to innovative goods and services, which is the task of the businesses. I strongly believe that now is uh, the time to think further to shape the European Union's future consumer protection policy for years to come. I'm happy that we will be discussing these matters during this conference today and tomorrow. Now it's my great pleasure to also officially open the European Consumer Protection Conference under the title Future Priorities of Consumer Policy in Digital era and I'm extremely proud to hold this conference bringing together participants from all over the EU and uh, also beyond the EU institutions, the European Commission and European Parliament as well as the European Economic and Social Committee, the OECD and other important stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, with the trust and confidence of uh, over 500 million consumers at stake defining consumer policies an extremely responsible task and therefore I'm happy to see this topic being so widely discussed in different forums across the EU and I'm convinced that also our conference held here in Riga will provide us with a great opportunity to share the ideas and exchange views and also to produce valuable contributions to the upcoming European Consumer Summit, as moderator has already uh, mentioned. Now I'd like to touch upon general consumer priorities. Uh, dear friends, um, all of us gathered here have at least uh, two things in common. Firstly, we truly care about consumer protection and secondly, we all are consumers and we want the single market to work for us. And Latvia sees uh, three things that uh, can help us with this and can help us to meet the, the challenges of consumer protection in the 21st century and make the single market simply work better. And those are the following. First, setting clear, fit for purpose rules for the digital age. Second, fostering complete enforcement of consumer protection rules. And third, creating deeper cooperation on all levels. Uh, so that I'd like to now to expand on these seemingly simple things. First, um, Latvia has always believed that uh, the well-functioning single market for consumers is the beating heart of the EU economy. With our daily lives becoming uh, ever, ever more digital, the single market uh, should become easier and more accessible. However, we all know the single market still has significant room for improvement. The fast evolving digital age simply underlines this fact um, 
further and uh, shows the weaknesses better. In practice, we are still uh, facing problems like um, price discrimination, geo-blocking, safety of goods and data security. The car rental sector is one of the examples where price discrimination has clearly come up and uh, unfortunately it seems that uh, signs of price discrimination are still present even after coordinated EU-wide action. New market trends like uh, collective purchasing websites, uh, comparison websites and social networks uh, pose new challenges, not only for consumers but also for the enforcers. For example, online uh, comparison tools are widely used by consumers to help them make choices about purchasing goods and services, therefore it it is essential to ensure the right level of trust and uh, transparency for these websites. Um, a recent, mo recent monitoring activities carried uh, out by the Latvian authorities and by my dear colleague uh, Baiba Vitulinja, who is the head of the Latvian Consumer Protection Rights um, Agency or office, um, have um, uncovered issues with comparison websites, uh, misleading price information and products not being available for the ad ad advertised price. To tackle this, we have worked with uh, businesses to ensure compliance with the rules of fair commercial practices. As a result, new and uh, more effective guidelines for business have been approved. I know that uh, colleagues from other member states uh, are working on similar issues and initiatives. And recently, the European Commission has carried out a study on comparison sites, and it is uh, currently working on a set of principles uh, to be respected by these um, websites and apps. EU law already protects consumer rights uh, for online transactions, um, no confusing terms, no abusive marketing, a guaranteed right to cancel and return, a right to enjoy safe products. Um, but um, there are still unfair practices out there that should and have to be tackled, eh? like many, few, uh, m many of you, I'm sure. I'm I am a mother of uh, small children and we all know very well how smart children are with the, the modern technology. In in-app purchases uh, widely used in online and mobile uh, games are an important problem and uh, children can easily purchase items through online games and uh, spend money without their parents' um, consent and I'm glad that there is the EU-wide action to tackle this problem as well. I also have to mention product safety. Uh, yes, there are strict rules already in place. Despite this, um, we find many unsafe um, products on the European market. Product-related injuries are also still a major problem. In general, the EU regulatory framework should enhance consumers' trust in the EU digital single market. Uh, equally, it should enable each and um, every consumer to purchase goods uh, and services everywhere in uh, the EU as easily as if they were buying them in their own country. And this goal can only be achieved by uh, ensuring clear, consistent and uniform rules at uh, EU level. Uh, in this spirit, we know that the EU is currently working on the simplification of existing and new legislation together with the reduction of burdens through the REFIT program. As part of this essential process, important Council conclusions on the single market policy have been adopted uh, during uh, the Latvian presidency. They call to examine how existing legislation can be made uh, truly fit for the digital age. The Council conclusions uh, also encourage using the digital single market uh, package to address relevant and important issues such as uh, geographical discrimination in the provision of goods and services for con consumers, ensuring online consumer protection, copyright rules appropriate for the digital age and adequate protection of personal data. Now to my second point only, uh, fostering complete enforcement of uh, consumer protection rights. Uh, enforcement of consumer rights has already been identified as a key priority of past consumer strategies. Uh, in the EU consumer agenda, enforcement has been recognized as a major challenge and uh, therefore forms one of the four pillars 
for action up to 2020, I'm sure we can all agree on the, uh, one core principle. The value of effective consumer protection laws is negated without proper enforcement. Uh, in reality, such well-made but not well-enforced legislation will not help enhance consumers' daily lives. Consequently, it's uh, clear that uh, full enforcement and proper implementation of consumer protection legislation should be the main priority of our national governments as well. Here I think we have to very clearly acknowledge that political commitment is an essential starting uh, point. I'm sure we all recognize how it facilitates effective enforcement at um, national and uh, EU level. It raises consumer conf confidence and uh, confident consumer means real economic growth. Let's um, move now to my third and final point, creating deeper cooperation on all levels. Effective cooperation between consumer protection institutions uh, forms an integral part of um, full enforcement. Only by uniting our forces and effectively cooperating can we prevent violation of consumer rights in cross-border shopping. Stronger rules on cooperation between member states, uh, consumer protection institutions are necessary to protect consumers when shopping cross-border. Uh, for almost a decade, the Consumer Protection Cooperation, or CPC, a regulation has been a good tool for safeguard consumers' collective interests across the, bo the EU uh, borders. And today, however, uh, the proportion of cross-border sales is growing. In parallel, we see that consumer protection institutions are struggling to deal with traders outside their ju jurisdiction in other member states and especially outside the EU. Uh, consumers should be able to rely on consumer protection institutions to deal with any business not compliant with the EU uh, legislation, but if you want our institutions to do so, I'm sure we all agree they need the right tools. Uh, one clear example uh, is the means to tackle websites violating consumer protection rules, especially those using domains registered outside the EU. Therefore, I'm delighted to see uh, this uh, among the Commission's stated um, priorities and look forward to the revision of the CPC regulation. During this important revision, I uh, also urge uh, the Commission to be as ambitious as uh, possible with its new proposal. I would also like to take this opportunity to praise important uh, national and uh, EU level cooperation seen not only between public authorities but also consumer organizations. Um, it is a great pleasure to have representatives from the European Consumer Organization, the BEOC, and national consumer organizations participating in this conference. The work undertaken by BEOC and national consumer organizations in the field of consumer protection is highly appreciated and uh, really, really very important. I would especially like to emphasize our su successful cooperation with Latvia's national consumer organization, the Consumer Interest Protection Association, uh, during the introduction of the Euro last year. In the future, we also plan to further successfully cooperate with them, for example, in introducing an alternative dispute resolution system. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, touching a little bit on Latvia's national issues, I would like to outline some of the challenges brought up by the ever-progressing digital age. Digital development has fostered the increase of uh, distance lending, opening also new opportunities, but, but uh, at the same time also challenges for enterprises, consumers and the relevant authorities. Nowadays, the so-called um, quick loans and SMS uh, loans occupy a significant part of the choices available to Latvian consumers. In response to this, uh, we have taken concrete steps to protect them. In fact, today, actually, uh, right, probably right at this moment, the Latvian Parliament is voting uh, on the second reading of a law aiming to tighten uh, the regulation for such lenders to reduce over indebtedness and I think we both, me and uh, Baiba, are sitting here now and thinking more of what is happening there in the parliament than, than, than uh, here, but that's very important for us. Um, the opening of um, 
the energy market is um, another important priority for Latvian consumers. The Energy Union offers citizens the chance to actively participate in the market, so benefiting from the new technologies and helping reduce their energy bills. In parallel, it offers also protection to vulnerable consumers. Ladies and gentlemen, the national governments, uh, EU institutions and relevant stakeholders are all still have a lot of work to do work with one primary aim to help the consumers. Many years ago, Martin Luther King delivered a memorable speech. I'm sure everybody knows that. And he said, I have a dream. I also have a dream. A well-functioning, completed, single market that best serves our consumers' interests. Our consumers are at the very center of the EU policies and the EU economy. I think all the politicians understand the best, that no policy is without the people, and at, at the core of every policy is the benefit of their people, of the consumers. So can we achieve this, or am I only a dreamer? I firmly believe that uh, we can reach, the, reach this goal, but with three preconditions, smart policy, full enforcement, and enhanced cooperation. So uh, let me now finish by underlining my confidence that today's conference will generate new ideas and solutions to help us to further strengthen consumer protection policy in the upcoming years. And I wish all of you a very productive and uh, also rewarding conference. And please enjoy our capital to the fullest. Thank you. So, thank you, Minister, for a very, I'm sure we can all agree, informative speech. Without further ado, I'd like to move on now, and I'd like to give the floor to the Commissioner to add her words on this important subject. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Latvian Presidency for inviting me to this very topical conference on consumer policy in the digital era. My participation here will have the same scenario as always. I will have a speech here, and then I will have to escape. So I will be, as always, deprived of the most fascinating part of all the conferences, uh, which uh, are the discussions which will deliver new ideas, new inspirations, new ways of tackling things. And uh, I must say I am very sorry I cannot stay here, not because of the dinner, uh, but uh, of course, local cuisine would be, would be nice to experience, but uh, the discussions uh, are, are, are very important for me. However, I will have my spies here, my, my, colleague, uh, uh, my colleagues who are sitting here, and uh, uh, which I would like you to cover in your discussions especially is how the behavior of consumers is changing in digital space because it is, the life is more and more shifting to digital, uh, digital sphere, and people start to behave differently. And especially, uh, I must say, I think a lot about share economy and about uh, all the consumer to consumer actions, uh, which uh, are growing. I saw some number by 25% by between uh, year 13 and 14, and so, this is a, a real strong trend and I can tell you I am pushed quite a lot to start legislating these consumer to consumer relations, crowdfunding or provision of, uh, of uh, facilities for holidays, uh, I don't know, many, many other things which have the start at the social network and in a website advertisement. And I must say I am very, very uh, reluctant and I, I need more, more time to think about it and also more uh, uh, ideas from, from you who also think about these new trends because uh, I think uh, it, what's important also in consumers' policy to leave responsibility on the consumers themselves. So when speaking about the crowdfunding, for instance, I think that one should think over whether to fi finance something 
and uh, one should think over the risks which he or she, I am commissioner for gender also, so also she must, uh, must uh, uh, consider very seriously before, before going to pay. And uh, what I want to say, the legislation cannot uh, solve everything. We cannot protect any 100% people should be responsible themselves as well. So uh, this is just uh, my wish for you to, to tackle also with these things uh, and these new trends. But speaking about consumer policy in digital era, let me start by asking you, are you all experienced online cross-border shoppers? If you are, then my congratulations. You set an example for the 85% of European citizens who still avoid cross-border online shopping for a number of good reasons. One of these reasons is a lack of trust when shopping across border. It is therefore one of my priorities to promote an open market where every consumer will feel as confident shopping online from other EU countries as they are from domestic websites to find the best deals. And here I must quote Madam Minister who said, confident consumer means economic growth. And I fully, fully agree. This is, this is our main idea. In a more and more digital uh, society, uh, it is only natural that the digital single market as a key priority. It offers huge opportunities for consumers and for businesses, and it can help get our economy on the path of growth. Under the political leadership of Vice President Ansip, the Commission will on the 6th May adopt the digital single market package to address various obstacles that still remain. One of them is a patchwork of national contract and consumer laws. Another one is a regime of modern and unified data protection rules. I will push forward both of these. Everyday European consumers miss out on opportunities offered by the digital single market. Over the past 12 months, for example, 10% of consumers used to cross-border online shopping were turned down from buying goods from a foreign traders. Trader, another 8% experienced geo-blocking. And the list of problems goes on. We only have minimum EU rules in place regarding conformity and guarantees on tangible goods. And we have no EU rules at all covering faulty digital products. In a move to protect their own citizens, some member states have already started drafting their own set of national rules to tackle the issue of faulty digital products. This is understandable, but we should avoid further fragmentation and instead address this issue at European level for the benefit of all citizens in the rapidly changing digital environment. At the same time, businesses also face difficulties when selling cross-border. Only 7% of SMEs in the EU currently engaged in cross-border sales. This means less products and competing offers for consumers. EU consumers could save billions of euro each year if they could choose from a full range of EU goods and services when shopping online. This is why unleashing the potential of e-commerce for the benefit of both business and consumers is a key objective under the digital single market strategy which the Commission will adopt on the 6th May. In this view, uh, it is my objective to propose a harmonized regime for digital contact, uh, content products and to modernize and simplify consumer rules for online purchases of tangible goods. We are considering a targeted approach with the aim of filling in the gaps in consumer protection and removing 
legal fragmentation. It means, in fact, removing the borders because we are working on the digital single market, not only on digital market. We want to make sure that coherent and clear rules across the EU make a real change in our citizens' daily lives, be it in their experience as entrepreneurs or consumers. But any legal framework for consumer protection cannot work if we do not ensure that it is properly enforced on the ground. The online dispute resolution platform, which should be up and running in 2016, will help consumers and traders settle their online contractual disputes much faster and at a lower cost than through courts. We will also continue to carry out EU-wide screening of websites together with the Member States consumer authorities. These joint actions, called sweeps, help to de detect fraudulent uh, practices on e-commerce websites and bring problematic websites in line with our existing legislation. Furthermore, in recent years, we have focused on improving the reliability and transparency of comparison websites, which consumers increasingly rely upon to shop for best deals. These are all very powerful tools. Things are changing fast. Nowadays, consumers are increasingly expected to be more than mere users of the digital market. If they want to fully benefit from e-commerce and online market services, consumers have to become experienced users with proper digital skills. Therefore, we will soon start supporting member states to develop training courses for consumers to boost digital education and empower consumers to make full use of their rights in the digital market. Another key element of the digital single market is the data protection reform. Robust data protection rules will restore citizens' trust in the market and will create a level playing field for all companies offering goods or services to Europeans. I am very grateful for the leadership shown by the Latvian presidency to advance the data protection reform, which both individuals and businesses are impatiently waiting for. We are aiming for agreement in the Justice Council in June and we will then immediately start the trilogues with the European Parliament in order to finalize it by the end of 2015, so by the end of this year. This has been called for by the heads of states of the European Union and this is also an enabler and an important basis for the digital single market. I had a very good discussion on the data protection reform and this regulation and the procedure uh, with uh, the Minister uh, Rasnac and I have a very positive feeling that the Latvians uh, are really going for it and they, they want to push, uh, push things forward so that we have this adopted uh, in, uh, uh, during this year. To conclude, let us not forget that European consumers generate about 57% of our GDP. They are the ones who keep our economy, economy ticking. If we want them to continue doing so, we must restore their trust in the digital single market, empower them to enforce their rights and provide a favorable environment for business, especially small and medium enterprises so that they can both exploit the advantages of a market with 500 million consumers. 500 million consumers, including my grandson. This is what Europe has. So, <laughs> yeah, also children are consumers, so let's not forget about them. Uh, legal certainty and simple and clear rules are key here. I call on you all to embrace this opportunity and to work together towards a solid consumer protection legal framework. And I look forward to listening to your views on this wide and complex challenge. 
and I hope to listen uh, to uh, to have the uh, report uh, from my colleagues about all the conclusions you make uh, over this conference. Thank you very much for your patient attention. Well, uh, thank you, Commissioner. I think we were all very interested to hear your views on the digital single market strategy that's upcoming and also the data protection reforms. Now again, without further ado, to make sure that we can all give you a comfortable break afterwards as well, I'd like to give the floor to Professor Vaidre. Your Excellencies, Ms. Commissioner, Minister, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be a part of this conference and a part of Latvia. Country which holds right now the presidency and everybody in European Union, European Parliament says we do well. So, you know, I love my country very much. I'm very proud to be Latvian and I love very much my very beautiful Latvian language. So, and that's why I decided to speak in Latvian, if you allow me. Otherwise, you will come home and you will be not listening how beautiful my language is. Now I give you a few minutes to reorganize the earphones and so on. Uh, and uh, I, I think probably my presentation will be a little bit practical to those who probably didn't understand the first two. Otherwise, I ask myself what else I can tell after these two excellent presentations, but I will try. It's a hard task, but I will try. I hope that you have put on your headphones and I can move to the Latvian language. My dear ladies and gentlemen, Since 1993, when the creation of the EU single market was started, conditions are being implemented to ensure that the movement of people, goods, services and money would be as free as within the territory of one country. The possibility to live, work, learn, buy and do business in other EU countries today is as today is just natural to us. Also, if we speak about the single market, a common uh, consumer protection policy is of significance because this policy has to ensure uniform rights for all EU consumers. Though the EU single market is believed to be one of the greatest achievements, its creation is not yet over. ICT technologies and uh, digital economy create new challenges. This makes us policymakers find new solutions to ensure smooth functioning of the single market and to ensure the protection of consumer rights. Thus, I'm really honored to address you together with the Honorable Minister and the Commissioner uh, with regards uh, to the future priorities of consumer policy in digital er era. Eurostat uh, data shows that we are very active users of Internet. Uh, the last survey show that 75% of all the people surveyed in the age group from the 16 to 74 years of age, uh, my grandchild does not fall within this category, but he's also very active as to the use of Internet. So this group admitted that they have used uh, the Internet during the last year, and 60% of them use the Internet for Internet commerce. So one in two Europeans uh, buy goods and services online, and one in seven purchases goods and services from uh, Internet stores in other countries. These are the most popular goods, uh, for example, clothing, sporting goods, books, magazines, uh, online learning materials, and so on. Great Britain is the leading country here, uh, as 
2% uh, of the Internet users buys online. In Latvia, the respective number is only 37%, but I'm really sure that this cannot be attributed to our lack of desire to buy online, but just maybe that we don't have so many opportunities. European Commission has been is represented on a very high level here, and it has calculated that the single European digital market is one of the most promising and largest uh, areas of progress with a potential benefit of approximately 260 billion euros per year. According to the European Parliament, long-term benefits from a fully functioning digital market could amount to 6% from the total EU GDP while in the short term it would be possible to ensure a GDP growth of up to 2.6 percent per year. We have 500 million inhabitants and this is the third largest market in the world. If we destroy obstacles in the digital environment we could compete with the US that houses the largest IT corporations like Google and in such internet stores as Amazon and eBay. Has to be mentioned that the e-commerce is the fastest growing sector in the world and the annual growth rate is up is almost 20 percent. It has to be admitted that currently the Asian countries lead in this e-commerce run, especially India, but at the same time more than one third of all world e-commerce transactions take place in Europe. The respective number in uh, the U.S. is 29 percent and in Asia 27 percent. It is important that, the Europe, that Europe could preserve its leading role in the world e-commerce sector. Currently, EU has single uh, rules with regards to consumer rights, including online purchases, the so-called e-commerce directive. There are also European consumer information centers that provide information to consumers with regards to cross-border purchases and try to find solutions in uh, various disputes. For example, if substan substandard goods have been purchased. Another good example uh, are the uniform rules that protect consumer rights when they purchase package travels online. These regulations were adopted a year ago in the European Parliament and they refer to situations, for example, when the quality of the hotel promised online differs from what you see in the reality. Unfortunately, the Council has not yet adopted these uh, regulations, but we are really looking forward. At the same time, I have to say that the European digital potential is far from being used fully. We cannot speak of a single digital market. It's still fragmented, as in many ways, we still have 28 national markets. To create a fully functioning, uniform digital market, single market, we have to eliminate obstacles uh, with regards to online transactions that uh, consumers and businesses face. We see many long-term problems that hinder the purchase of goods and services online, as well as the creation and growth of startup companies. Quite often, legislative shortcomings with regards to sellers and distributors of digital content uh, curtail uh, consumer rights. Generally, the legal framework adjusts very slowly to the development of the digital market. I would like to refer to some main irregularities that the consumers face. These are also challenges to us as lawmakers as, uh, that we work on in the Internal Market and Consumer Protection Committee, uh, where I am a member. It is clear that all online activities and digital services are based on good quality internet connections because telecommunications ensure good access to world networks and communication services. So fast, safe and affordable internet, this is what we want to see in the European Union. Unfortunately, we cannot yet speak of a single digital communication market in Europe. Instead, we have 28 national markets with differing rules. 
due to these differences, consumers cannot receive services from the telecommunication operators of other EU countries. For example, for business reasons, I have to travel a lot and use uh, mobile services abroad. I did some calculations. I hope that I am right. But an hour in Skype, uh, when I use a camera, would cost me 60 euros or one euro per minute, which is quite a lot. If I want to watch a video in YouTube, it would cost nine euros. Roaming charges, though they are much smaller. I remember that I was just elected to the European Parliament in 2004, one minute uh, to Latvia cost almost three euros. The situation has improved a lot, but still the roaming charges are very high if we use smartphones. So to make Europe competitive in the digital world, roaming charges have to be abolished. It would be a real benefit to the consumers. At the European Parliament, we have underlined that it is necessary to implement uh, much further reaching reforms in the telecommunication markets. We also wish uh, or desire that the large digital uh, companies would not abuse their dominating uh, position. I would like to remind that on April 15th, the Commission sent uh, a letter to Google uh, claiming that it abuses its dominating uh, position in the market. When we use Google Chrome, uh, the first uh, companies in the list of results are the companies with which Google has signed agreements. The users of digital services uh, come up with uh, geo-blocking, so the so-called. That means that uh, the internet contents is blocked. Uh, that refers to purchases in the internet and also uh, audiovisual and culture product accessibility on the internet. Uh, for example, uh, the BBC, uh, very many of the telecasts and documentary f films may be seen only in the UK, but not elsewhere in Europe. This, uh, very often in Brussels, I um, uh, see the uh, announcement, excuse me, this material cannot be um, uh, disseminated in the country where you are. That refers to YouTube, and uh, you may have come up with the problem that there's a company who does not uh, deliver the purchase that you have made. Uh, and um, I understand, understand that uh, very often the consumer finds out about the failure only in the very last step when all the information has been already entered and very often uh, they even uh, deny the use of your um, credit card because it has been issued by another country. That is in spite of the Euro payment zone that exists already for five years. We have um, experienced such cases, which means that for the um, uh, consumers that is lost uh, time and also lost uh, prop profit. Um, I understand my daughter uh, bought some boots online. At first, uh, she tried to talk to an acquaintance in Brussels. No, in Brussels, it was not uh, possible to deliver them. It was possible to deliver to Germany, to a, a hotel. And then finally, when I was there myself, I've, we finally got the uh, goods, uh, but that should not be the way it is. In the European Parliament, we have uh, stressed the necessity to um, change uh, the uh, copyright uh, rules uh, and also uh, Günther uh, Pettinger stressed when he talked to the deputies uh, that by autumn uh, there'll be a draft law for the harmonization 
of um, copyright rules so that we do away with unnecessary uh, restrictions and also seeing to the fact that these serv services should be equally accessible to all the EU member states. When we do purchases on, uh, online and the same as in the shops, we need to speak about the uh, purchase safety and uh, this um, uh, draft has not been supported as yet. I hope that Latvian presidency will be able to find a compromise and we shall live to see the day when this law becomes effective so that the uh, consumer law, law works for the consumer's safety. And when I have talked to the people in the ministries, I was not really convinced by any of the arguments why this regulation should not be adopted. One of the main uh, obstacles for consumers is that um, uh, the member states uh, um, uh, do not enforce uh, the legislation that has been agreed upon in Brussels. We need to have harmonization there so that we have it on an equal footing in all the member states. Um, for example, in 2013, where uh, uh, the consumer uh, was allowed to you uh, to change the operator uh, by, but uh, keep the same telephone number however this was not um, enforced and uh, we have talked about it uh, to the uh, commission and also the member states to work more on this issue uh, actually, the uh, development of technology has absolutely uh, no boundaries. Uh, we do uh, purchase uh, goods that have been uh, produced in other countries. However, the uh, uh, VAT uh, rules have not, uh, are not ready for that. Uh, today, we whether it is Luxembourg or another country that is chosen because uh, there is a more friendly system, this does not uh, develop competition. Uh, the VAP, uh, VAT MOS uh, uh, are enforced starting with this year, and that uh, pro pro provide that um, these uh, the PVN should be. Uh, um, uh, paid in the country where the purchaser is and not the seller. The uh, VAT system must be modern, modernized because it is, does not correspond to the needs of online services. Uh, today, there is an enormous amount of data, personal data that are sent and exchanged in the world. That's why we have the issue about the protection of, uh, uh, and the privacy of, of personal uh, data. This belongs to our fundamental rights, although we are not always certain that our data are con controlled in the proper way. For example, in Germany, excuse me, uh, 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 Germany is a very backward uh, country in terms of um, uh, the internet because we have the internet in every uh, taxi in uh, Germany. To get it, that I have to fill in a number of uh, papers where I see um, in very uh, fine uh, font uh, on five pages, and then you actually have to sign it that you will comply with it. Uh, I don't think that these terms and conditions really work and whether there is a, a, a institution that controls how these data are used, uh, we, I haven't received a proper answer as yet. The uh, draft regulation for the data protection um, for IT was uh, uh, 
actually passed, adopted in the, at the beginning of uh, this year. However, the final adoption is still lagging behind. Our objective um, uh, is uh, to elaborate the uh, conception of the digital market that would uh, fully um, comply with the requirements not only of today but also of the future. We need that is important for the poten development of the potential of the digital um, space. Uh, and now we know that the European Commission has promised that in May already they put forward proposals for the establishment of a single digital market in the EU, and um, we need a comprehensive digital um, European government's uh, framework. Uh, to round it up, I would like to say that the uh, uh, consumers will gain from a single digital market uh, better quality, lower prices, uh, and easier access to the uh, products and services from other countries, and also more uh, safety and more competition. Uh, 500 million potential clients is a wonderful motivation to turn to business activities that would uh, create more jobs and promote uh, the development of the economy in Europe. Thank you very much. And again, uh, thank you very much, Professor Valeri, for your words. I'd like to add at this point that I, too, agree that Latvian is indeed a beautiful language. And I'm, I'm sorry I had to listen to you in interpretation. I lost the poetry and music of what you were saying a little there. Okay. Oh, you're, you're so kind. Now, joking aside, though, on a more serious note, Professor Valeri also outlined her views there on the significant value to Europe of a fully digitized, uh, fully, fully harmonized digital single market, and how this will benefit not only consumers, but with significant impact on economic growth and health. And also highlighting that she feels it's still currently fragmented, and that significant action and comprehensive action is needed. Now on that note of summary, I'd like to provide an opportunity for any of you to pose any questions you would like to to our speakers. So at this point, would anybody have a question which they would like to offer to our panel of keynote speakers? Indeed, the, the, the minister is indeed perhaps correct that the speeches were so comprehensive that no questions are indeed necessary. Well, if we have no questions at this particular moment, I'm sure they can be posed later on in our proceedings. At this point, then, I would like to call a short break for you. Now, we find ourselves now at five minutes past four, and I'd invite you all kindly to be back here, promptly, please, if possible, at 4.30. Thank you very much. <laughs>